Okay, now before we get into the uh, nuts and bolts of how to correct the tuning problems in your bow, let me go through my process of tuning. And I think if you follow this process, you're going to have great results. Now, the very first thing that I do when I go to tune a bow is I powder test it for clearance. I use spray foot powder. You can't assume that your drop away rest is getting out of the way. A lot of them don't. A lot of them have, you know, big arms sitting up like this and it's a lot to get them out of the way. You cannot assume that you have clearance. You want to make sure you powder your fletching, powder your rest. You know, spray foot powder is the very best thing to use and uh, just ensure that you have a 100% clearance, okay? Once I know that I have clearance, because I don't want to be chasing my tail as I go through my tuning process, now I'm going to paper tune, okay? And I do all of my paper tuning at five yards, okay? The reason I paper tune at five yards is because that's the point when the arrow has started to stabilize and shortly thereafter, it's going to start to correct and go in the reverse direction. So you want to be doing your paper tuning as far back as you can where you're going to get the, the biggest reaction out of the arrow. That's the importance of paper tuning at five yards. Now, understand this point though. Paper tuning, all arrows are, you'll understand very quickly that all arrows are not created equal. So when you do your paper tuning, you want to do it with four arrows, okay? And we're going to cover this in detail when we go through what I call dynamic spine tuning, I'm going to show you the exact process, okay? So just make sure you don't just tune to one arrow because you could have a problem, a problem arrow that you're tuning to and be chasing your tail. Now, after I get my bow properly tuned, then I'm going to do what I call dynamic spine tuning, okay? Now, what dynamic spine tuning consists of is simply verifying and tuning your arrows so that they all react exactly the same to each other. Now that is extremely important. If you want your broadheads to fly like your field points, if you want all your arrows to be capable of shooting in the same arrow hole, you absolutely have to do this step. There's a lot of companies out there that throw a lot of fluff around, they spine locate their arrows or they run a spine line here and a spine line there. I'm here to tell you after thousands of hours of testing, that is, does, does not exist. You cannot achieve same hole accuracy from a static spine measurement. I've done this over and over and over again. And the most important thing that you can do is this dynamic spine test that verifies your arrow's reaction through paper and it'll tell you exactly what you're gonna get down range, okay? And then on to the next process. You know, for bow hunting, we want our broadheads to fly like our field points. Um, you can make your broadhead or your fletched arrow and your bear shaft fly together. I don't really recommend it, but let's just call it broadhead tuning, okay? Broadheads, just imagine a broadhead as, as a, an arrow with fletching on the front of the arrow. And anytime that arrow comes out of that bow, if that arrow comes out of that bow, you know, with a little bit of a high tear in it, that broadhead's gonna wanna catch the air and plane downwards. So it's very important that, you know, if you want your broadheads to fly like your fill points, it's not 100% necessary, but if you want your broadheads to fly like your fill points as close as possible, then we need to make sure we follow these steps and get a very, very good tune and then make the fine adjustments at the end, okay? Now let's get down to the very basics of tuning. We're gonna cover every problem that you might encounter and we're gonna break these little areas down so that you really understand them. 